In Lies of P, nothing is as it seems. With the seed of deception planted firmly in the core of the city of Krat, even concepts such as friendship, trust, and one's identity could not be taken for granted. Giangio, the sheepish pharmacist, was no exception. Despite his kindness and generosity, the post credit scene revealed he was much more than a simple farmer. But before we journey to a land where fairy tales can become reality, it's time to give credit where it's due. Kudos to Chuckles the Jester for locating the easter egg in the previous thumbnail. If you look closely, you'll see the arm of God hidden in the right hand side of the border. If you're new to the channel, I've started playing a game with viewers where I hide an easter egg in the thumbnail of each of my videos. The first person to state what and where it is in the comments gets a shout out in the following video. Now, back to the matter at hand. From the very first encounter, Giangio always seemed a bit suspicious. He stumbled over his words and nearly exposed himself as an alchemist before settling on his false origins as a humble farm boy who had an interest in trees. Unable to clearly articulate who he was or what he was doing in Krat, he decided to give Geppetto's puppet an excerpt from a local legend. The collectible referred to as Guillaume's Ballad reads, Guillaume, the king's knight, found the shining tree on a rocky mountain. The tree's fruit resembles gold coins, and this fruit is a miraculous blessing for many people who have recovered from different diseases and who have been able to escape the plague. The elated knight built a castle and called himself the Holy Knight. But remember, sojourners, miracles always have a price, no matter how captivating they might be. This ballad mentioned the legendary gold coin fruit tree and explained Giangio's reasons for being in Krat. Interestingly enough, Giangio stated that he was suffering from the petrification disease and that the fruit could possibly cure him of his illness. However, this was likely a lie used to portray himself as sickly or feeble, minimizing the possibility for him to be perceived as a threat. Careful observers will notice that Giangio was far from defenseless, as he was seen wielding etiquette a deadly weapon disguised as an umbrella. Soon after clearing out the cathedral, Giangio was found in the storage room near the courtyard that housed the mystical golden tree. However, in his time alone with the tree, he realized that he was unable to pick the fruit without danger of being burnt, which he credited to his affliction. As such, he requested that Geppetto's puppet pick the fruit for him, and in return, he would be rewarded for his generosity. I found it quite bizarre for a pharmacist with a background in growing trees to be so adept at harnessing the power of bottled wishes and supplying an endless amount of star fragments. Further discussion with Giangi reveals that the ancient people of Krat had discovered how to manifest the reality warping power of wishes, and this is what caused me to question his true motivations. Giangio's knowledge of ancient Krat and their legends, coupled with his desire to harvest the gold coin fruit tree, seemed to allude to the fact that he was an outsider with an agenda. Fast forward to the post credit scene, and my suspicions were confirmed. Giangio was simply an alias for the legendary alchemist known as Philippus Parcelsus, who revealed that he was part of a secret organization that I'll refer to as the Ouroboros. The talented young alchemist was responsible for creating a weapon with the same name. Its unique design was meant to symbolize the moon and wholeness, which I believe tied directly to his ultimate mission of reassembling and reviving the alleged god who attempted to bless mankind with immortality. The flavor text for the Arm of God relic provides further insight. It reads, The Arm of God, obtained after defeating Simon Manus. It is a mysterious relic that the alchemist treated as a sacred object. The alchemist believed that there was once a god who was ripped to shreds trying to give immortal life to the humans he so loved, and they wanted to revive him. However, the god who was deep in sleep never answered their prayers. In my previous video, I provided a theory that actually identified who this arm belongs to, so be sure to check it out if you haven't already. It's my belief that when this being was ripped to shreds, his parts were scattered across the realms. This would explain the apparent crossover between fairy tales such as The Adventures of Pinocchio, The Wizard of Oz, and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Yes, that's right. Paracelsus is actually the Mad Hatter, and I'm going to prove it to you. As you may know, Paracelsus was a real-world figure most prominent in the German Renaissance in the 15th and 16th centuries. Although he would be remembered as the father of toxicology, his contributions to medicine would encompass a wide range of topics, most notably chemistry, hermeticism, and the three primes. Paracelsus' unique stance on hermeticism was tied to the harmony between man and nature, and that diseases were caused by poisons brought from the stars. Therefore, it was of utmost importance to understand the influence of the stars on the human anatomy. 
The fact that Giangio was able to develop a cure showcased his knowledge in toxicology, and the fact that he was the sole provider of star fragments echoed the beliefs of his real-world counterpart. But this is where it gets interesting. The Three Primes was a model that attempted to explain the nature of medicine. It referred to three components, sulfur, salt, and mercury. In the 19th century, mercury was used in the manufacturing of felt hats, resulting in a high rate of mercury poisoning for those who worked in the industry. Interestingly enough, the symptoms which included neurological damage, excessive timidity, anxiety, and problems with speech contributed to the origin of the phrase, mad as a hatter. Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, featured a notable character known by a similar moniker. In the novel, the Hatter was sentenced to death for murdering the time. If you recall, Paracelsus from Lies of P was part of an organization whose primary mission was to seek out immortals, unlock their mysteries, and continue to exist for all eternity. According to the legendary alchemist, there were many different forms of immortality, and Geppetto's puppet had recently met the criteria. Killing time itself would certainly be a way to live in perpetuity and avoid death's cold embrace, making Paracelsus as mad as a hatter. And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know you want more content just like this. Click on these videos on screen to continue your journey through Krat, and I'll be there to guide you when you arrive. Consider becoming a member for exclusive perks like emojis, members only videos, and more. Or check out my code for your Patreon page if you want behind the scenes content, or if you just want to support me in a more personal way. Until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out. Join the Inhuman community today.